This video tutorial will highlight the most commonly used file management functions in LASX. You've acquired some promising data. Now it needs to be managed. This can be done within the Open Projects tab. An Open Projects tab has been placed in several different parts of the software to make it easy to reference no matter where you're working. Notice we have one in the Acquire tab, in the Process tab, and finally the Quantify tab. This is helpful if I'm quantifying data, I can easily reference it from within this tab rather than having to go back to, say, the Acquire tab. We'll work within the Acquire tab. The Open Projects tab has three main sections. At the top, we have a toolbar with commonly referenced features. In the middle, we have a data container, in this case containing a series of images. And at the bottom, we have our project settings with some additional functionality I'll explore in a bit. I'll start with this middle section, the data container. The default Leica file format is called a .lif file, which stands for Leica image file. We often call it a lif for short. These lif files have the default name of project. Within a project, you can have one or multiple images. In this example, there are six. The benefit to saving as a lif is that all of the metadata is saved within the image, including calibration data and all microscope and camera acquisition parameters. There is some other useful information listed next to each image that enable you to easily navigate your data. This includes the total size of the project, the total size for each image, the dimensions that were included in each image. Next to series 001, for example, you can see that it's an XYZ image, indicating that it's a Z stack. Next to image series 002, it indicates that it's an XYT image, so you know that this was a time lapse. If you happen to be imaging with a Leica Thunder system, there is some additional nomenclature that can help you reference files. SVCC, LVCC, and ICC indicate the type of algorithm being applied, whether it's small volume computational clearing, large volume computational clearing, or instant computational clearing. Again, these only apply to Thunder systems. All of these naming conventions help you quickly identify the images you want to observe from the list of images. Many of the common file management tools can be accessed directly by right-clicking on any of these images, enabling you to do things like closing, saving, deleting, or renaming. Let's go through a typical example. I've identified series 001 as a promising data set and want to give it a different name to more accurately describe the experiment. In this case, I will call it VCA63X for the cell line and the magnification. To rename any of these images, I can do so by right-clicking and selecting Rename. Alternatively, I can click the image, type in VCA63X, and now I can easily reference that file at a later date. I've also identified series 003 wasn't representative and can be deleted. For that, you can right-click and delete. The last thing I'll do is save this project by right-clicking, saving as, and give it a specific name that I can easily reference at a later date. I'll call it JD081020. At this point I've saved the whole project, but what if I wanted to save a specific file as a TIFF, say to submit it to a journal or to open it in a PowerPoint presentation? To do that I can select any of these images, right click, export image, and here I can give it a file path and save that image and it will save to that specific file path. In the YouTube channel, there's a video that covers the exporting tool in much more detail. The last feature I'll show you within this dropdown is the option to select Properties. This contains all of the metadata associated with that image. It includes things like which channels were imaged, the exposure time and wavelength of each channel, what magnification was used, any additional information about Z-Stack and time-lapse, What's nice about having all of this information captured is we can use it to apply these exact settings and replicate an experiment. You can also apply settings by selecting any image from the list and pressing the apply button within the toolbar. From the toolbar you can also create a new project, open an existing project, or save all projects. Now we'll discuss the project settings tab here at the bottom. Here we can give newly acquired images a user-defined image name. For instance, if I call it VCA63X, just as before, and I acquire a new image, 
Notice it names it with that prefix and 001 at the end. If I acquire an additional image, it names it sequentially. We also have the ability to autosave by pressing the plus symbol, turning on autosave, specifying a custom name if you'd like, defining the file path, and selecting a data type. Note that LIF is not an option on the list, and instead we have this file format called an LOF, standing for Leica Object File. This is similar to a LIF in that it contains all of the metadata, but recommended for larger data sets used in long-term time-lapse. Now when I begin to acquire images using the buttons at the bottom, it will save to the path at the settings that I had specified. This concludes this training video. If you have any additional questions, please reach out directly to your Leica Advanced Workflow Specialist. Thank you.